welcome to St. Luke's. My name is Kelsey and I use the pronouns they, them, she, and her, and I'm a seminary student serving St. Luke's for contextual education, and I'm so glad to be part of this community. We're glad you're joining us for worship today, whether it's from near or far, as a member or as someone new, we honor, affirm, and value you. Just as you are, welcome to worship. Let's take a deep breath in and out as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Good morning, St. Luke's. The Anti-Racism Ministry invites you to join our monthly gathering this morning from 11.30 to 1 on Zoom. This month, we are going to focus on Lutheranism and our complicity in systemic racism. We'll talk about Lutherans throughout history as well as Lutherans today. We will also discuss calls for reparations, including the recent social media campaign by Pastor Lenny Duncan. If you are aware of Pastor Duncan's work, you might know that he has been using the hashtag defund churchwide. You probably also know that many members of St. Luke's community carry out their jobs or ministries as part of the churchwide organization. And we give thanks to God for the good work that is done at churchwide. So there's tension here. We hope to have the conversation about reparations courageously while holding space for ambiguity, hurt, or disagreement. Please join us for this courageous and rich conversation. Check your email for the St. Luke's Zoom information. And we'll see you at 1130. Andrew and Frankie here from the Reuniting St. Luke's Task Force. We're to, here to share with you some updates from the Phase 4 guidelines. Based on the results from the survey that you filled out last month, updated scientific research, recommendations from our Synod, and local and state guidelines, the Reuniting St. Luke's Task Force has recommended to Council that Phase 4 look very similar to Phase 3. Council approved the recommendations of the Reuniting St. Luke's Task Force. Those recommendations included that online worship continue to be the priority. We also recommended that outdoor worship be allowed to take place for special occasions and festivals. Outdoor worship, though, will still be live streamed for those who cannot attend in person. After consideration, the task force continues to recommend that small groups meet outdoors when meeting in, per when meeting in person. We encourage creative ways to meet into the fall and winter season, such as meeting around a fire pit or heat lamp, along with appropriate clothing. Select small groups may be permitted to meet indoors at the Wrightwood Kimball space on an as need be basis only, and it must be scheduled through the St. Luke's office. For the moment, this will, like, will most likely be limited to moving and housewarming renovation needs. These recommendations create a living document that will continue to be reviewed and updated as we learn more about the virus. The task force will meet again in January to assess our needs. You can read the full phase four guidelines, including detailed precautions for in-person outdoor worship on our website. We know that these guidelines might be disappointing. We miss going to church and seeing everyone. It is especially difficult to think about keeping the Advent and Christmas seasons with limited opportunities to gather. However, our faith tells us that loving our neighbors and ourselves is not e always easy, and at times it may require us to release our desires and preferences in favor of God's abundant life. In the meantime, know that St. Luke's will continue to find creative ways to worship, build community, and serve the world that God loves. Frankie and I look forward to seeing everyone soon when it's safe. Hey, good morning. I'm Pastor Aaron, and I use pronouns like she and her. Worship next week will be outdoor worship with a service of leave taking from our storefront space. So next week will be our last Sunday in our storefront space, even though we won't be in it, we'll be outside. But next week is our opportunity to thank God for the ministry that has happened in that space and to officially mark the end of our time there. There are two great options for attending worship next week. If you'd like to attend outdoors in person, you must RSVP no later than this Friday, October 23rd. Space is limited to no more than 50 people and this gathering will abide by COVID safety protocol. So an RSVP is required to attend. You can find the link to RSVP in the description of this video. 
Another great option is to attend worship online next week. The outdoor worship will be live streamed to Facebook at 10, 10 a.m. So please plan to participate in whatever way is right for you, whether that be in person, outdoors, or right here online. Gird your loins and prepare your imaginations. This November 1st, St. Luke's will embark on an All Saints Adventure role-playing game. Look for more information in our weekly email and RSVP by October 25. On Sunday, October 11th, the St. Luke's Council hosted a virtual town hall on staffing proposal and mission. At that town hall, council received feedback from the congregation about the staffing proposal, but we know that for some people, it's easier to provide feedback in written form, so we've also created a survey. Please take a moment to share with the council your thoughts by filling out the survey by tomorrow, October 19th. The link to the survey is in the description of this video. Announcements are over and now it's time for worship. Worship in October at St. Luke's focuses on living in the in-between and today focuses on healing. Healing is that space between sickness and health, between brokenness and wholeness, between who we have been and who we will be. Today, October 18th, the church around the world commemorates the festival of St. Luke, who was known to be a healer and after whom this congregation, St. Luke's, is named. Today we will learn more about our namesake as we contemplate our identity as a congregation named after a healer. When have you experienced the gift of healing in body, mind, or spirit? What could it mean for St. Luke's to be a community of healing? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all creation. Amen. Martin Luther wrote, This life, therefore, is not righteousness, but growth in righteousness. Not health, but healing. Not being, but becoming. Not rest, but exercise. We are not yet what we will be, but we are growing towards it. The process is not yet finished, but it is going on. This is not the end, but it is the road. All does not yet gleam in glory, but all is being purified. Trusting that God is with us in the in-between, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who are in need, and through death and resurrection, Christ has made us Christ's own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Praise the one who breaks the dark.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, who inspired your servant, Luke the physician, to set forth in the gospel your love for the poor and the healing power of Christ, graciously continue in your church this love and power to heal, to the praise and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Last weekend, some of us from St. Luke's gathered around fires to tell stories about waiting in the in-between times. Let's hear what Mike has to say about waiting and the kingdom of God waiting in times that we have waited um, and where we might have found God during that waiting. And one of the things that I thought of was early on in the pandemic, um, before things reopened at all and we were all, pretty much everyone was, was staying at home um, all the time. It, it, there was definitely a lot of waiting to find out what would happen next or, you know, when things were going to change or what news would come. Um, but I found pretty quickly that during that waiting, we were, the four of us, spending so much time together. Um, you know, of course, we already lived together, but we just spent all of every day together. And that, um, yeah, I, I found really quickly that I really cherished that time, and that's, you know, I, I felt like we were really, really, we had everything we needed, you know, we had each other, um, and we were safe together, and uh, I feel like God was with us then. Um, and then, we were reading just now Psalm 23, um, and the, the, the end of that psalm spoke to me a lot, where it says that, you know, goodness and mercy shall follow me, or I'll, I'll be tended by God, love and mercy, um, and and dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I, I felt like those were those two things were saying the same thing, that, that to dwell in the house of the Lord, to, to live in God's house, is is to be surrounded by love, or and, and to surround others with love too. Today we will focus on St. Luke, who was a healer. St. Luke spent time walking alongside Paul and encouraging solidarity among Christians. Mike talks about how showing love and mercy to those around us strengthens the kingdom of God on earth. How do you feel God's love, mercy, and solidarity today? A reading from the second pastoral letter to Timothy. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of, the, of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for Christ's appearing. Do your best to come to me soon, for Demas, in love with this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, Titus tell Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. 
Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful in my ministry. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. According to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread throughout all the surrounding country. He began to teach in the synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, the town where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because God has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. God has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And Jesus rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fixed on Jesus. And then Jesus began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. When my spouse Josh and I knew that we were going to adopt two kittens in the summer of 2014 before moving to Chicago, we were a complete mess trying to decide what to name them. We should give them serious names to respect their creaturehood, not like pet names like Fluffy or Scratchers or something like that, but also not too serious because we don't want to burden them with all that gravity. And the kittens were litter mates, so we thought maybe we should give them names that sort of match. Like maybe we should name them after some famous couple or duo. But is that cliche or is that actually just like perfect? We would have an idea about their name and then we would like think through every implication before deciding that it was too much or not enough or really weird or just not right. I've never named a human child, so I can only imagine the incredible stress that would come with that. Um, but it's a really honest struggle, really, because there can be so much power in a name. Names tell us something about where that person comes from or cat. <laughs> names reveal a history. Names, in a way, contain the hopes and dreams of the person doing the naming. Whether a name is inherited or given or created, chosen, names matter because names show an identity. Our name is who we are. We ended up naming our cats Von Neumann and Sosa. So obviously we didn't go with um, the idea of coordinating <laughs> the two names. Josh named Von Neumann after John Von Neumann, the 20th century Hungarian-American mathematician and computer scientist. And my friend uh, Veronica, who speaks Hungarian, later told me that his name should actually be pronounced von Neumann. And I named Sosa after Pablo Sosa, an Argentine pastor and hymn composer whose work means a lot to me and who actually died earlier this year. But let's talk about another name. In 1900, 
only 11 years after Logan Square was annexed into the city of Chicago, and still 18 years before the Eagle Monument would be built in its center, a group of Lutherans living in this neighborhood formed a new church, the first English-speaking Lutheran community in the area, and decided to name it St. Luke's. Last Sunday, which is 120 years and however many days later, St. Luke's met for a town hall meeting. Our congregation is living in the in-between as we wonder what our ministry will look like now that we're moving again to a new location, this time back into a historic building with a new ecumenical partner congregation, into new engagement with our neighborhood in the midst of an ever-changing pandemic. I heard many of you asking in the town hall, who are we? Who is St. Luke's? And who is God calling us to be? Today, the church around the world commemorates St. Luke, the person after whom our community is named. So what is the meaning of this name? Who was St. Luke? And what does being St. Luke's Lutheran Church of Logan Square mean about our identity? Well, let's talk about what we know about St. Luke. First of all, his name was just Luke. <laughs> Saint is a title that the church gives to honor people who lived exemplary lives or witnessed to the gospel. Also though, Lutherans believe that all of God's people are saints. So if you want, you can call me Saint Aaron and I'll call you Saint too. Luke was not one of the 12 disciples. Luke did not meet Jesus or know him personally. Luke was probably also not part of the Jewish faith, Jesus's religious community, but still, at some point in his life, we don't know exactly how, Luke became a Christian and devoted his entire life to this person who he had never met. Luke knew the Apostle Paul and accompanied Paul in Paul's mission to spread the good news of Jesus. Most notably, Luke's role in spreading the gospel was in writing down the story of Jesus. Luke wrote the story down just as Luke had heard it and understood it and carefully researched it and taken it to heart. Luke was an amazing storyteller. He crafted a beautiful story about Jesus, which ended up being named after him, the gospel according to Luke. This is one of the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The books in the Bible that tell the story about Jesus's life, death, and resurrection. Luke also wrote the book of Acts, which is kind of like a sequel to the Gospel of Luke and tells the story of what the disciples did after Jesus ascended into heaven. We can guess a lot about Luke by studying Luke's writings, but outside of those guesses, pretty much all we know about Luke, we know from just a few times that the Apostle Paul made a small mention of Luke in his letters. You might remember that the Apostle Paul is the one who wrote lots of letters to the early Christian communities. This was during the time when the church was brand new. Paul would write these long letters, sometimes long, sometimes short, letters with theology and proclamation and sometimes advice to the Christian communities. But they weren't just essays, these were actual letters. So they ended up starting and ending kind of the same way that our emails or phone calls start and end. Like at the very beginning, you have a greeting, like, hi, this is Pastor Aaron writing to you today about Sunday school, or hey, Apostle Paul here, I wanted to remind you to try your best to get along with each other. So that was the beginning, but at the end of Paul's letters, you know how when you're getting off the phone, you might say, oh, and tell your mother I said hello, oh yep, yeah. and Josh sends his love too. Well, Paul does the same thing in his letters. In three different letters, as Paul is wrapping up, he mentions Luke. In the letter to Philemon, Paul writes, Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends greetings to you, and so do Mark, Aristarchus, Damas, and Luke, my fellow workers. 
the letter to the Colossians says, Luke, the beloved healer, and Damas greet you. And 2 Timothy, which Melissa read in worship this morning, lists name after name of people who have deserted Paul in his suffering or traveled far away. And it says, only Luke is with me. From these small mentions, we actually learn a lot about Luke. Luke is a fellow worker, a comrade with Paul in the work of the gospel. Luke is a healer, which Christian tradition has understood to mean that he might have worked as a physician. And Luke is a person of solidarity. Only Luke remains with Paul even when other apostles have gone away. That's pretty much all we know about Luke from the Bible. Everything else we have to draw out of the writing that he did. Of course, in the Gospel of Luke, Luke isn't writing about himself, he's writing about Jesus, but it's quite possible to learn a lot about the author by reading the work they wrote. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John may all be telling a story about Jesus, but they all tell it differently, and that difference has meaning. So here are some things that Luke's Gospel has to teach us about Saint Luke. And by the way, I'm using this background in this slideshow because one of my favorite myths about St. Luke is that he was the first person to paint an icon. And this is an icon of Luke painting an icon of Mary, mother of God. So here are some things that Luke's gospel has to teach us about St. Luke. Luke is about Jesus. Luke crafts his gospel in the form of biography Everything is centered around the person of Jesus, trying to help readers understand the essence of Jesus' life. Like a good biographer, Luke highlights important parts of Jesus' backstory to show who Jesus would become. For example, the story of Jesus as a young boy in the temple foreshadows the work that Jesus will do as an adult. And when Luke tells the story of the first event in Jesus' public life, the story tells you everything you need to know about the work Jesus is about to do. This is the gospel reading that we heard for today. Jesus stands up in the temple, the first act of public ministry, and reads from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, where Isaiah says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because God has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. God has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Wow, Jesus' life is going to be about good news, liberation, decarceration, healing, and joy. And then Jesus says, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing of it. But all this happens in Jesus' hometown and the assembly can't hear it, at least not from him. And so they violently chase him out of town. So wow, Jesus' life is going to bring resistance and not everyone will want him to stick around. So Luke, in writing this biography, really wants us to understand who Jesus is and what Jesus is about, because Luke is about Jesus. Next, Luke shows us a Jesus who is compassionate, a friend to outcasts. Jesus, in Luke's gospel, is always spending time with people who are sick, cast out, unclean, poor, and stigmatized. The first people to learn about the birth of the Messiah are lowly shepherds out on the job. Fisher people from the middle of nowhere and tax collectors become Jesus' disciples. A woman who menstruated for years on end touches Jesus' robe and is healed. More women are mentioned and given voice in Luke's gospel than in any other gospel. And the famous Sermon on the Mount in the Gospel of Luke is a sermon on the plain because this Jesus likes to be at eye level with the people. Luke shows us a Jesus who heals not only the person, but the community. When human brokenness causes relationships to be broken or people to be excluded, Jesus not only heals the person, 
but changes the circumstances so that relationships are restored. Luke's gospel is the only one that contains the story of the prodigal son, in which two children and their parent are restored to relationship after they had all been lost in their own ways. Luke is also the only one who tells the story of the Good Samaritan and how healing ends up coming from the person you least expect, even someone you've learned is inferior or your enemy. Luke shows us a Jesus who is in between. Jesus is deeply connected both to the past, the present, and the future in Luke's gospel. Luke relates Jesus to the long history of God's relationship with Israel, tracing Jesus's lineage all the way back to David, to Abraham, to Noah, to Adam, to God. Jesus's present ministry is planted at a certain place and time in world history, but it is understood in the context of the Hebrew scriptures, the prophets that came before, and it points to the long unfolding of God's plan to redeem the whole world into the future. Luke knows that the gospel is political. Whenever Luke is outlining the major events of Jesus's life, Luke is always careful to mention who was in power over that region at that time. The birth of John the Baptist, for example, Jesus's cousin and comrade, begins with the words, in the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah, John's father. And the story of Christmas, the birth of Jesus, begins like this. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. Luke knows that it matters, not only that John and Jesus were born, but the fact that they were born within a power dynamic on the underside of an empire, in the shadow of kings and emperors whose reign created war and oversaw destruction and allowed injustice for John and Jesus and all the people that they would meet in their ministries. And Luke loved to sing. This is one reason why Luke is my favorite gospel Jesus' mother Mary sang the Magnificat, the song of praise. Oh God, I am so small, but you chose me and you are mighty. You have cast down the mighty from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. And John the Baptist's father, Zechariah, sings the Benedictus, the prophecy in the tender compassion of our God the dawn from on high will break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The angels sing praise in a concert for the shepherds at Jesus's birth. Gloria in excelsis Deo, glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. And in the Nunc Dimittis, the elder, Simeon, sings that God's promise is complete. Now, Lord, let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. So, what's in a name? What can St. Luke show us about who God might be calling St. Luke's Lutheran Church of Logan Square to become? What if our neighborhood were to say about us, St. Luke's is about Jesus. St. Luke's shows us a Jesus who is compassionate, a friend to outcasts. We see this congregation hanging out with weirdos and lifting up voices that aren't always heard and preaching at eye level with the people. St. Luke's shows us a Jesus who heals not only the person but the community. 
What if our neighbors could say, St. Luke's is a force for communal healing in Logan Square? Yes, dear community, this is our identity. This is who we are. St. Luke's shows the world a Jesus who is in between, connecting the past to the present and future of God's salvation history. St. Luke's is in between too, still waiting and growing and healing and changing. St. Luke's knows that the gospel is political. Our faith tells us that it matters who is in power and who is not and whose side Jesus is on, the one who came to bring good news to the poor and let the oppressed go free. And oh, the St. Luke's love to sing. Each week, even across distance, we join our voices to Mary and Zechariah, to Simeon and the angels, as we sing God's future into being in our present. And you know, even if they don't say all that stuff about us, you know, if maybe we don't get mentioned except maybe a few small times, kind of as a footnote at the end of some other story, it will still be true that God has made St. Luke's people to be comrades, to be healers, to be people of solidarity. It's in the name. It's who we are. the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. We pray, holy God, for the church universal, for the unity of the church, for the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America and the Metro Chicago Synod of the ELCA, for Bishop Eaton and Bishop Curry, for faith communities in Logan Square, for, for Pastor Aaron, 
Kelsey, Carmen, Bev, and Claire, and our church council. O oh God, our sanctuary, empower the church, and in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, omnipotent God, for the well-being of creation, for the will and wisdom to care for the earth, for communities experiencing and vulnerable to increasingly severe natural disasters, especially those affected by the current hurricane season and wildfires, for Lake Michigan, the Chicago River, and the Mississippi River, for rhinos and leopards and sea turtles, for faithful stewards of creation like farmers and agricultural workers. O oh God, rainbow of promise, preserve the earth and in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, righteous God, for peace and justice in the world, for efforts toward international cooperation, for peace in Armenia and Azerbaijan and disputed regions around the world, for human designed and enforced borders and separation to seize, for justice and liberation for black and brown lives, for creativity and faith-filled risk to listen, act, and speak truth, for Governor Pritzker, Mayor Lightfoot, and our elected legislators and judges, for accessible voting and fair elections, for tax laws and policies that reflect justice and abundant life for all, especially passage of the Illinois Fair Tax. O oh God, sovereign and judge, guide the nations, and in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, benevolent God, for the poor, oppressed, sick, bereaved, lonely, for the hungry and the homeless, for persons without family or friends, for individuals who are under unemployed or underemployed, for those facing eviction from their home, for persons suffering from coronavirus and their loved ones, for those living and experiencing mental illness. O oh God, shepherd and mother, protect the needy and in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, compassionate God, for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. For those in hospitals and other institutions of care, for those who have no medical care, for those who are incarcerated, for Gwen and Sandra, and for all who today will die. O oh God, healer and nurse, heal the sick, and in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, faithful God, for our congregation, for deeper faith and stronger commitment for us all for our homebound members, for the anti-racism ministry and the public faith team, for the congregation's transition to a new space and partnership, for continued discernment and dialogue of future staffing proposal, for those among us experiencing loneliness and isolation as the seasons change, for our individual and collective in between places. O oh God, everlasting arms, Embrace this assembly, and in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, loving God, for the desires of our hearts. O God, our heart's desire, grant us peace, and in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanksgiving, eternal God, for all who have died in the faith, especially St. Luke the Evangelist, that at the end we will join with them to rejoice in your presence, O God, our homeland. Gather us to yourself, and in your mercy, Hear our prayer. 
Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gathered into one with all creation by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us in the languages or translations of our hearts. God in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, come, your will be done, on earth earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share signs of peace with one another, near and far. Now we continue with our offering. We are called by God to be stewards of this community in many ways, and a gift of money is one of the ways that you can bless this continued ministry. You can give money at stlukesls.org slash donate. Thank you for your offering, which sustains this community. Receive this blessing. We are all in between from what was, through what is, into what is yet to be. God bless you with the good and hard gifts of thresholds, so that they might be for us a thin place, so very fleeting and yet eternally full of the presence of God. The triune God, who was and is and will be, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, peace. remember Remember the poor, thanks be to God. God.